Hi guys, I just wanted to give you all a short overview of the new uh, turbine V2 motor which I have here. And I um, apologize, this is not a polished video, this is just a real quick uh, informational uh, video I wanted to get out to you guys. So this is the turbine 6565 um, brushless motor and you can see it's uh, quite beefy. Um, these ribs here increase the surface area of the can and what that does is it allows more efficient heat transfer. Um, on the back here you'll see the six stainless steel uh, high strength screws that attach this end rotor to the shaft on the inside. Now at the front you'll see the mounting points. This is the standard uh, the inner ones are the LaCroix um, mounting points for hyper trucks and then there's another um, ring around here I forget what the size of the outside one is but I'll put it on the website um, another common 63 uh, millimeter diameter motor mounting option there uh, you'll see the uh, stainless steel shaft 440C high carbon hardened uh, it's got the two areas for the clips it's got an area for a set screw as well as a uh, little L key there. So many ways to keep the pinion on and secured. So one thing I want to mention about the bell or the end rotor here is that it's all one piece. Everything that's black here you see is 7075 aluminum which is comparable in strength to a mid-grade steel. So this is an extremely strong um, rotor. And the other thing you'll notice is that it's all one piece. Um, many of the existing motors right now for e-skate are two-piece. They have the, um, the cylindrical part here and then the cap which is pressed on, um, and which is fine. The difference is though that this is, since it's one piece, it's much more rigid and stronger. The reason they make it into two parts is because it's cheaper to make that way. This uh, has to be lathed from a single block of 7075 aluminum. That takes time and it costs a lot of money. Now we have 12 gauge multi-strand high quality wire here. This is the hall sensors hookup. Uh, you'll see here we have five and a half millimeter bullets for maximum current carrying capability. Let's go ahead and take this apart. Get this clip off here. Now with a single removal of a clip like this, you can see there's a little brass washer here. So just undoing that, you can take the motor apart. And there it is. We'll get to the stator in a minute. So this is the inside of the rotor. Uh, you can see the connection down there for the six screws. It's extremely strong. And you can also see in the bottom of the, the bell there some, uh, some fins. And what those do is as the rotor spins, those fins force air to the outside and through these holes. Uh, so it's a centrifugal fan. You can also see that the magnets are held in place by this machine ring on the top and bottom. So they stay perfectly aligned and they're not going to go anywhere they don't need to be coated with a ton of epoxy all over the place okay and as I mentioned this is that one piece 7075 super strong aluminum shell okay so how does this work let's see the cryo core cooling so that's something that I named this system where if you look at this stator and this is a 22 pole motor. The laminations are 0.2 millimeter Japanese silicon steel, so it's high quality. We have high quality 180 degree centigrade copper wiring. And if you look close, you'll see that the wires are encoded, encode, encapsulated in epoxy that's uh, vacuum pulled through. So those aren't gonna move or go anywhere. 
Now, on the inside edge here, you'll see these cooling veins, and these veins are actually part of all of these laminations. So these veins run the entire length of the motor. And what this does, as this rotor spins, it sucks up air through these channels. And the air comes into the motor through all these small holes at the front. And the air goes through the core of the motor and exits here and then exits out the back of the rotor as it spins. So most outrunners, even ones that have centrifugal fans like this, usually have the air running along the outside of the stator here and the center is filled in and there's no way to get that heat that's building up in the center out and so you get to thermal uh, throttling much sooner. Now <clears throat> in this case the air is pulled through the core it's also allowed to go around the outside of the stator and that keeps it much cooler than it would normally would be uh, in a comparable size motor. And now down in here you'll see two bearings at this end and there are two bearings at this end. Now these are made to be easily removable so you can pop these out and you can change them when you need to. If it starts running rough or you get some dust or dirt in there they're really easy to change and that's by design. So quad bearings supported. Now you'll see the shaft fits down in there perfectly. It's easy to take apart. Now this is a 6565 motor and most of the motors for e-skate are measured on the outside can. Here's a LaCroix stock motor and you'll notice as I mentioned before the one or I'm sorry the two-piece rotor and uh, we have the cylindrical part here and then you have the cap which is pressed on. The shaft is held in place with a single tiny set screw. So let's compare kind of the power capability here between these two. You have one tiny set screw on a pressed cap versus six screws going into a hardened stainless steel shaft. So this is going to be much longer. It's going to be able to take much more power. Now <clears throat> you can see also the, mo the magnets in here are simply glued into place. There's no retaining ring. And here's the stator of the same motor. And you can see what I was talking about before. There's no way to get air into this center area. In fact, this motor doesn't even have a vent at all. So it's going to overheat much sooner. Um, and the one major enemy of any brushless motor is heat. And so that was the primary goal with the 6565 turbine is to get rid of that heat. It's to keep it as cool as possible for as long as possible so that you don't get that throttle limiting or damage your components. Now, as I was saying before, the Chinese manufacturer motors usually make their measurements on the uh, external rotor. So this is where they measure the height and the diameter when they call their motor uh, 6385 or what have you. Now conversely, the way we measure the turbine is at the stator. So you can see it's almost a square. It's a six, 65 millimeters this way and 65 millimeters this way. You can see the size difference here. And all else being equal, if you have a larger diameter, you have a longer torque arm, or you have a longer moment arm here that you're turning, you're going to get more torque. Not to mention we have the many more poles. Also, I want you to take a look at these really tiny, fragile bearings uh, used in this motor here. These are, in my opinion, not suited to high power use and end up wearing very quickly. And you contrast that with these Japanese NMB or NSK uh, high quality bearings uh, and there's really kind of no comparison. So 
I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this little overview. We're going to have two different, two different KVs. Uh, this one is 190 kV, so this is good for 12 to 15 S. And then we have 130 kV, and that's going to be good for 18 to 20 S. So you can see the difference in size here. The turbine V2 is a beast of a motor, and to get the most power out of this, you're going to want to throw a lot of amps at it. It can take 150 amps continuous, no problem, uh, depending on the ambient temperature. And it can take bursts up to probably 250 amps. So there's a lot of power here, but you need an ESC that can deliver that kind of power. So that's something to keep in mind when upgrading your motor. One last thing I'll mention is that you get your choice of color uh, in the nylon braid that goes around this and uh, prevents uh, wear and chafing on the end. So I have red, blue, and black. And I think that's it. I hope you enjoyed uh, this little overview of the turbine V2 motor. Thanks guys.